Hello friends, welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. In today's video, I am going to talk about the analyze phase in DMAC methodology. As you know, I am creating a series of videos in DMAC methodology, one video for each of the phases. So in today's video, I am going to cover analyze phase. Before we start, let's understand what is DMAC stands for. D stands for define, M stands for measure, A stands for analyze, I stands for improve, and C stands for control. The purpose of this phase is to analyze all potential causes to the project problem and to identify significant causes out of these potential causes. There are certain tools that we are going to see. One is called data stability tool called run chart. Then we have normality chart, process capability, identifying the significant access through hypothesis testing and the summary of the analyze phase. You can identify the process capability of discrete data with the help of this formula, which is norm sine v 1 minus defects upon opportunities plus 1.5. So how to select the hypothesis test? You have a project y and x's. Your project y could be continuous or discrete as well as your project x could be continuous and discrete. When your project y is continuous and your x is also continuous, you use simple linear regression. When your project y is discrete, your project x is continuous, you use logistic regression. When your project y is continuous, it could be normal or non-normal. For comparing means, you will use normal and for comparing medians, you will use non-normal data. When your project x is discrete and is one variable and your y is continuous and normal, you will use one sample t-test. Y is continuous and non-normal and X is discrete and one variable you will use one sample Wilcoxon test. And when your Y is discrete and your X is discrete you will use one P test. When your X has two variables, Y is continuous and normal you will use two T test. And when Y is continuous and non-normal you will use man Whitney test. And when your Y is discrete and X is discrete and has two variables you will use two P test. Same way when your y is continuous and x is discrete and it has two or more than two variables. When it is when y is normal you will use ANOVA test and when y is non-normal you will use mood median test and when y is discrete you will use chi-square test. For comparing variations, standard deviation comparison can be done with homogeneity of variation test when y is continuous and x is discrete. Let us go to Minitab and see how these tools can be used. I am continuing with my previous example of patient wait time. So in column C1, I have patient wait time. So we first check whether the data is normally distributed or non-normally distributed. So we will go to stat, basic statistics, graphical summary. And under variables, we will enter patient wait time. And click OK. P value of greater than 0.05 suggests that data is normally distributed. Now, if I have to check whether the doctor is available or not has a contributing factor on patient wait time, I have that data in column C2T. If you remember the graph when my Y is continuous and normal and my X is discrete and my X has two or more than two variables, I will use ANOVA test. And the path for that is stat ANOVA one way. Under response, we will have patient wait time. And under factors, we will enter doctor's availability. P value of 0 0.000 suggests that it is a significant factor. So this value should be less than 0 0.05 to say it is a contributing factor. So doctor's availability is a contributing factor to patient wait time. When doctors are available, the mean wait time reduces to 11.6 minutes compared to 18.775 minutes. Moving on to the next tool, which is Moods Median Test. For that, my Y should be non-normal. I have kept some non-normal Y in column C3. We can prove that with the help of graphical summary. 
stat basic statistics graphical summary under variables i will enter column c3 and click ok since p value is less than 0.05 here it indicates that data is non normally distributed now i will check which day of the week day of the week contributes to the patient wait time or not so i have patient wait time in column c3 and in column c4 i have day of the week my y is non normal and my x is discrete and has more than one variable i will use moods median test stat non parametric test moods median test under response we will have c3 column and under factor we will have c4 column in this case p value is greater than 0.05 which means that this is not a significant factor so day of the week is not a significant contributor to patient wait time there is another tool which i want you to understand is chi square test for that my y should be discrete and my x should also be discrete so in column c5 i have patient is happy or not happy and they met the doctor in 10 minutes is the x that i have want to test so if they meet the doctor in within 10 minutes of arriving in the hospital whether they are happy patients or not happy patients so i want to test this for that i will use chi square test and the path for that is stat tables chi square test for association under rows i will enter c5 and under columns i will enter c6 p value is greater than 0.05 in this case as well it means meeting the doctors in 10 minutes doesn't really impact the happiness of the patient or satisfaction level of the patients in the hospital that could be one of the factors but it is not the only factor so friends i hope you would have understood how to identify significant excess from the list of potential excess with the help of hypothesis testing in the analyze phase this comprises the analyze phase for dmeg methodology you would be able to identify all the significant excess with the help of hypothesis testing so i hope you would have understood this with the help of this video so if you really like this video please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends i will see you in my next upcoming video till then take care bye bye